Hey, how you guys doing out there today? This is Stephanie Jimenez from the Roto Beast team, and I'm here to present you our NBA picks for Wednesday, November 15th. As always, if you want to watch our full video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, and if you want to play the actual lineups that we're playing every night, please visit our website at www.rotobeast.net. Um, so, hey, let's jump into it. Today, I mean, last night it was a three-game slate. Um, you know, it was kind of tough. I hit on DraftKings. I finally snapped my seven-day win streak on FanDuel, but it's tough on a small slate. I'm going to definitely get it back tomorrow. I'm feeling really good about this slate um, for Wednesday. I feel like I have some really good value plays to kind of, you know, help you get those big-time play, uh, big players in your lineup and help you hit big. Um, so let's jump into it. I mean, we have an 11-game slate today. Um, you know, there's some, there's about five games that I'm really going to focus on. Um, we'll start with the first game. It's going to be Philadelphia at the Lakers. This is going to be a really, really fast paced game. I think it's going to be a pretty close game. Um, and it's going to be the highest scoring game of the night. Um, Vegas projected at a projection of a 220 points, um, projected to be scored. Um, I really, really like both sides of this game. I think this is a great place to start, um, your lineup construction with, see what great values we have in that game. And, you know, who do you think that you can actually just get in so next we'll go to this game it's going to be a big game it's going to be on ESPN you got the Cavs going to Charlotte um, Charlotte is a team that usually plays better at home um, this game has the second highest implied total of 219 points projected to be scored um, and Cleveland is favored by one and a half um, next we will talk about Toronto versus the Pelicans. This has the third highest implied total um, with 217 points projected to be scored. Um, and New Orleans is actually favored by three and a half. And I think that's kind of surprising because, you know, Toronto, I feel, is a better team than the Pelicans. But Toronto's on a back-to-back. Um, so, you know, they could be tired. It makes sense. Um, so, you know, the New Orleans is a favor. I think it's going to be a pretty close game throughout. And I do like both sides. Um, next, we will talk about... Um, Washington going into Miami. Um, this game has the fourth highest implied total at two, 211 points projected to be scored. Uh, Miami's uh, favored by one point. Um, and then the last game we're really going to focus on is going to be the Magic's going into Portland. Um, this game has the fifth highest implied total on the slate at 210.5. And, and Portland is projected um, to win by five. So that's kind of where I'm at on the five games I'm really going to be focusing on. My lineups, um, the teams I'm going to be focusing on, um, I'm going to start with the 76ers first going against the Lakers. They have the, uh, the highest implied total at 111 projected points. Um, and they actually get a 4.4% uh, pace bump. You know, uh, the faster the pace, the more shots they're going to get up, more rebounds, etc. So I like the Sixers. Um, then I really like the Pelicans going against the Raptors team who's going to be tired. Um, you know, they are on a back-to-back. -back. They had to take a late flight and, you know, go into New Orleans. The Pelicans have the second highest implied total at 210.3 projected points to be scored. Um, and they don't get a pace up or a pace down. It's a pretty even pace of what they play. Um, so I do like them. Um, and then we'll talk about the Cavs. I think they're my third favorite team to target. Um, more I like LeBron and I like Love. Um, they have a third highest implied total of uh, 110 projected points. They get a slight pace bump. Um, and you got the Hornets on the other side of the ball going against the Cavs, who just haven't been good. We just seen the Knicks almost beat the Cavs. Um, I think this is going to be a really good game with the Hornets. Um, they also get a slight pace bump going against the Cavs. Um, next, we'll talk about the Lakers. They have 108 projected points to be scored, and they get a 4.3 pace bump going against the Sixers. Um, I really like both sides of that game. And the last team that I'm going to focus on is going to be the Blazers. Um, they have 108 projected um, total, which is six highest on the slate. Um, and they get a 2.6 pace bump going against the Magic. I think this game is going to definitely be a back and forth game. So, yeah, those are the six teams that I really like. Um, next, we'll get into the picks. And make sure that you listen to all the picks. So I'm going to give you these sleepers. And I'm going to give you a couple people that are must starts. So you need to know these people. All right? So let's jump into it. Okay. So first... Thing first, okay? I know you guys are going to tell me, oh, you're not going to say nothing about Oklahoma. 
I like Oklahoma City Thunder. You know, I like all the guys. The problem is there's no Vegas line out on the game yet. Um, Chicago's not a very good team, and OKC's been struggling a little bit. And you know, I think that they're going to come out and just hammer the Bulls. It's going to be a blowout. You know, you know, Westbrook at ten point three. Um, his price is still kind of high for. I mean, I know it's not high for him, but for what he's been doing, um, I still would like to see it go down a little bit. So OKC's okay. I mean, I understand them, but I'm not really going to focus on it any of them um, so let's jump into the picks so my top point guard on the slate is going to be Damian Lillard against uh, the Magics a fast-paced team um, I know the guy hasn't had the best you know um, last couple games on a 9.5 price tag you know this is not going to work for us this 25 36 39 this is not going to work but you know he's also showing us a 62.5 45, 61, 44, 47. We've seen that consistent stretch. Um, you know, in this matchup against the Magic, I mean, it's like I said, a, it's a, a up tempo game for him. Um, I think he's really going to get going in this game. I mean, he's too good of a scorer to be scoring 12, 19, 15. We're used to the 25, almost 25 points a game. Um, I think this is a great spot for him to bounce back. And I really like him as a, one of the top point guards on the slate. This guy, he's probably going to be the chalk. And he deserves to be the chalk. Kimba, at home, he plays much better at home. Going against, um, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Cavs, they can't haven't guarded. Uh, they haven't guarded guards very good um, all year. Um, Kimba, I mean, this guy, he has major upside. I mean, yeah, he's had a couple of duds, but he always gets he gets up and he's ready to play at home. At a seven seventy eight hundred price tag, we need almost say about thirty eight out of him. He's averaging thirty six point five. If he gets us his average. Um, you know, I'm happy with that. Um, I think he's a solid uh, Cavs game play tomorrow going against the Cavs in a very close game that, you know, I think they actually have a chance to win. Next, we'll talk about Lonzo Ball. I mean, this guy's up and down. Of course, he's a GPP, but he's showing us the upside. I mean, you know, he's just got went off a triple-double. The Phoenix Suns, he had an off game. He's still filling up the stat sheet, got some steals. Um, you know, he's a GPP play every night. Um, and, you know, one of these days, you know, I'm going to mention him. You're going to say, hey, let me just throw an Alonzo ball just for fun. He's going to win you a tournament. Um, but he's not a cash game. He's just a tournament player. Then we'll talk about Drew Holiday. I talk about him every night. But you know what? He gets us around the same every night. You know, 7,000 price tag. We need 35. I mean, he's playing massive minutes. 38, 38, 41. 29, 42, 34, 43. I mean, he's getting his run. He fills up the stat sheet. Like I always say about him, it's all about if his shot's going down. If he's, if his shot's going down, he's going to get you value. If his shot's not going down, he's going to get you just under value. But he's not really a guy that's going to get you a dud. And I really like him tomorrow. The last guy I'll talk about, a point guard, is going to be TJ McConnell. I mean, this guy's been playing good. He's going against my Lakers. The highest scoring game um, on the slate. I mean, this guy, he doesn't need crazy minutes to, you know, get quality points. He only played 18 minutes against the Clippers. He got 21. But every time he gets, you know, solid run, you know, he does put up points. And he's shown us 40-point upside. You know, he went on a consistent run when he was getting minutes, 31, 29, 30. Um you know, he's had a, kind of a rough stretch a little bit the past couple of games, but these haven't been the best matchups. Um, I think, you know, he's a solid uh, ch uh, lower end play um, at point guard tomorrow. Next, we'll move on to CJ McConnell. I think my top shooting guard is going to be CJ McConnell tomorrow. Um, the guy's getting his minutes. Um, you know, he's just like Lillard. Their shots haven't been going down. They've had a rough, you know, a couple of shooting games, but... And yeah, these guys are scorers, and they're going to bounce back. They're both averaging, you know, 22 and 24 points a game. I think this is going to be an up-and-down game against um, the Magic, and I really like him tomorrow. At a 6.9 price tag, we need about 34 for value. And I could definitely see him getting there tomorrow, getting very close to it. Um, next, we're going to talk about, where is he at? I think it's just, I think shooting guards are paid down spot to be honest. I don't think you really have nobody. Pay. You got Batoon. He's coming back. Um, you know this is the thing right here. He's just coming back. He's gonna play tomorrow, but he's gonna probably have a minute restriction. Um, so I mean, if they say his minute restriction is gonna be twenty five minutes, 
Then, hey, at 5.4K, he's a guy that we seen last year. He filled up the stat sheet. You know, we know that's what he does. Um, it's just all about the minutes tomorrow coming back from injury. If he's only going to play 15 minutes, then, you know, we can't consider him. But if we can get mid to high 20s, um, he's a great play against the Cavs in a close game tomorrow. Then we got Mr. Reddick. This guy's been good. I mean, 5,000. If his shot's going down, we need 25. Four out of the last five games, he got it. 42, 25, 26, 36. Going against the Lakers, I mean, we don't have the best defense. Um, Booker just tore us up the other day. Um, I like Reddick. I think that he can have a really good game tomorrow. And I actually think you could probably get him in your cash games. Then we will talk about Pope on the other side. I like Reddick a little bit more, to be honest. But, hey, Pope. He's doing very good as well. He's getting his minutes, you know, mid-30 minutes. Um, and, you know, he's putting up, you know, filling up the stat sheet. 32 points, 17, 30, 25, 28.9, 22, 24. At a 4.9 price tag, all we need is 24. Um, and I, against J.J. Redick, his defense sucks. He's a good shooter, but he sucks on defense. I really like Pope tomorrow, too. I think he can be a solid catch can play as well. And then the guy on the cheaper end, more of a GPP play. J.R. Smith, we know this guy can get hot. He can make shots. Um, the last two games, actually, you know, two of the last, I mean, three of the last four games, he got us 23. On a 4.3 price tag, that's pretty much value. But he's not, a, even though he's getting these massive minutes, he's really, really shot dependent, um, in my opinion. You know, this is kind of an outlier. Usually he gets these ones, ones, you know. And uh, so. I don't really trust him for cash games, but he just saw a GPP play. He could get hot um, in the close game against Charlotte with the second highest implied total. Next, we move on to small forward. Okay, guys, it's almost here. LeBron, obviously a good play tomorrow. Going against uh, Charlotte in the highest implied total. I said I love the Cavs. I mainly love LeBron. Um, eleven point three price tag. He gave me a scare the other day. I thought he wasn't. He was gonna bust on me. He ended up getting it late, and I think he's really gonna show up against Kimba Walker. I think you know he's like he knows it's gonna be a tough game. I um, mean, he's playing a lot of minutes. You know, we know that about LeBron. You know, he's been <clears throat> flirting with the triple double. You know, kind of a lot lately. Um, you know, I like LeBron tomorrow. I think he's he's one of the guys you're probably gonna want to pay up on. Um, him or, or Davis, to be honest. Um, so I really like him tomorrow as a top small forward. Then we'll talk <clears throat> about Robert Covington. I mean, the guy's just been good. I mean, he's been he's been doing really good. He's got us, you know, he's got 34, 33, 31, 40, 22 against the Warriors, and then he got another 54 burger. Um, the guy's averaging 31 uh, fantasy points a game this year. I'm at a 6.8 price tag. Uh, we need about 34. So, I mean, even if he gets us his average of 31, it's right around five uh, times, which we're looking for. Um, against my Lakers, um, I think he has this 54-point upside again. Um, and I'm not just trying to jump on the bandwagon, but I just know my Lakers and how we play. Um, I really like Robert Coving tomorrow. I think he's a really, really, really good play. <clears throat> then we'll go down to Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Um, I mean, this guy's good. I mean, they like him. He he fills up the stat sheet. He hasn't really got 2-2 two, two going um, this season. He had uh, some personal reasons. He was out a few games. Um, but when he's ready to play, they give him. We see the 27 minutes, part of 25 and 27 minutes at a 4.5 price tag. Um, I think that he's a solid GPP play with upside um, going against the Cavs. I can see them kind of going small a little bit. Uh, but he is more of a GPP play, just somebody that I kind of, kind of like a little bit, and I'll just kind of keep an eye on him. It's just, and it all depends also on how much Batum is going to play. Um, but now we're getting to it, okay? So this guy was just kind of somebody I was looking at. I don't really care about, but these are my two guys. You could probably use both of them, or you could, or just use one of them if you want to be safe. But both of these guys, if Powell's out tomorrow, which I think he will be, um, for the Raptors. We got OG. This guy, the last few games, he's played 21. Today he started because Powell was out, which I said we got to keep an eye on the Powell news. But if he's out tonight, played 29 minutes against the Rockets.
got a 16 points, two rebounds, one assist, one steal, 23 fantasy points for 3.2. I mean, that's really good. It got us an uh, easy seven times, almost eight times value. Um, so I think he's a really, really good play if you hear the pals out tomorrow. Just lock him in. Um, your cash game, you can do him or you can do the guy he split minutes with, C.J. Miles. This guy, I mean, he only got 16 minutes today, but he went off for 32 fantasy points. I mean, 21 minutes, 19 fantasy. This guy, I mean, he's a scorer, plain and simple, I think. So between these two guys at uh, 3,100 and 3,200, uh, my opinion is C.J. Miles has the higher ceiling. You know, has a better chance to go off for a massive game. But... For cash games, I think OG is going to give you the higher floor if he's starting. He played 29 minutes. If he gets us, you know, another 28, I mean, even 27 minutes tomorrow at 3,200 starting, um, he's going to easily hit value, and he's probably a lock in your cash games. So I'm telling you right now, if Powell's out and this guy's starting, lock him in your cash games, pay up for LeBron at your other small forward, and move on with your lineup. I'm going to tell you now you're going to win major money. All right, hey, just remember I told you that. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to power forward. Anthony Davis, the guy, every night he's pretty much getting 50. 48.5 will say he's very close to 50. Same exact price as LeBron James. So it's it's a tough decision for you. It's do you have value at small forward and you pay up for Davis? <clears throat> or <clears throat> can you find value somewhere else you could pay up? For LeBron, a small forward, and, and give value at a different position. I like Davis, though. He is the top power forward. Um, he's pretty much a lock for 50. Um, he's going to be banging with Serge Ibaka. Serge Ibaka is a solid defender, but he ain't messing with Anthony Davis. The dude's just way too big, um, and he's definitely the top power forward on the slate. Next, we'll move on to the rookie, Ben Simmons. They call him Baby LeBron. I was at the Warriors game the other day. And the crowd was chatting, baby LeBron. It was funny. Um, but, I mean, he's playing a lot of minutes. He's filling up the stat sheet. The only problem with him, to be honest, at 9.8 price tag for a guy. I was watching his shot the other day. And it isn't the prettiest shot. It's a little nerve-wracking. But, I mean, he's still averaging 18 points a game. Um, you know, and the guy fills up the stat sheet, plain and simple. Um, he's a really good play against the Lakers tomorrow. At a 9.8 price tag, you need about 48. Um, and I definitely think he can get there. Um, I think he is a solid play tomorrow. Um, you know, I just don't know if I would want to take that risk or find the extra 1500 and pay up for Anthony Davis if I was going to pay up at power forward. But, hey, he's a solid play tomorrow. Um, then we'll talk about Kuzma on the other side of the ball. Um, you know, the last game he was like acting timid, like he didn't want to shoot until the very end of the game. Um, so he kind of busted a little bit. He he did a go under value, which I think may keep people away and the ownership will be lower. Um, but he's been getting, you know, 33 to 37 minutes, you know, with the high of 41, 37, 38. Um, you know, he hasn't been bad, you know. He's been um, doing solid 40, 28. He had an off game, um, you know, 20, uh, 39. I don't think he's really, uh, um, I don't think he's a cash game player. I think he's more of a GPP player, in my opinion. But, I mean, he's a really solid play, and he does have, you know, the 40-point upside. We have seen it a couple times already. Then we will talk about, okay, so we're going to my guy. This guy, just lock him in. He's another guy. I'm giving you two cheap value guys to lock in your lineups tomorrow. Sark, my boy Sark has been doing solid. He's, his price is so low, they don't want to raise his price, but he's still starting. He's still getting his uh, minutes. I mean, he fills up the stat sheet. This is his upside he has. 25 and 10. I mean, at a 4.5 price tag, if he even gets me, say, that's 13 and 10, or even this 14, 3, 3, 1, 1, if he gets me 37, 26, or 27 at a 4.5 price tag, I will play him every single night. I really like this guy. Going against my Lakers small, this guy's going to have a really good game. He's going to get over 30 fantasy points as long as he gets 
his 30 minutes. Um, I really like him. I'm probably going to lock him into my cash games and wish for the best. I think he's a really, really good play at power forward. So, hey, remember at the end of this video, I'll recap my favorite guys, all right? But I really like Sarek a lot. Next, we'll move on. We'll finish it up with center, DeMarcus Cousins. Beasting every night. Plain and simple. He's getting 50 pretty much every single night. 60 is a lot of nights. Upside of 70. What? 80. Um, this guy's, hey, he's a beast. Top center. Plain and simple. I don't have to explain too much. Joel Embiid going against my Lakers. I think his price is a little bit up there. Just like Simmons' price is a little bit up there. But he is a really good play. Um, he has hit 50 a couple times. He hit 60 once. Um, you know, going against my Lakers, it's going to be a really up-tempo game. Um, he's finally starting to get his minutes up in the 30s, 32, 35. Is he going to play 35 minutes against my Lakers? Then sign me up. He'll be a great play. Dwight Howard, um, I mean, I like him going against Cleveland. I think this is going to be a really, really competitive game. At 7.7K, we need about 37. Um, and, you know, he's averaging 33 um, this season. I think that... Uh, you know who? Who I think he's gonna mu pretty much out muscle Kevin Love. Um, Kevin Love isn't gonna want to bang on the block with them, and he's gonna suck up a lot of rebounds down low. Um, then we'll talk about Kevin Love on the other side. Kevin Love, he had an off game. Okay, I understand, but he's good. I mean, I like Kevin Love when his three pointers going down. I mean, he has massive upside. 53, 62, and the past four games he's hit those two marks. I mean, he's playing good. I don't understand why he really got sat in this game. But, you know, it's all right. To one game, that's why it's DFS. You move on. I really like Kevin Love in this spot. A 7.2 price tag. We need 35. He's averaging 34.2 on the season. Um, I think he's a great play, and I think he's actually a really good cash can play as well. Um, I miss this guy, but I'm going to talk about him really quick. This guy, he hasn't been the best. He's a GPP play only, okay? So I'm just bringing him up really quick. GPP play only, but sinners, they destroy um, Vucic on, on the Orlando Magic side. So he's a solid GPP play. Nobody's going to own him. Um, okay. And then last guy we're going to talk about. If um, Adams is out again for the Thunder, you got to like this guy, Johnson. I played him the other day, and he got in foul trouble. What was frustrating? It was frustrating, really frustrating because he got in foul trouble. But um, when he was in there, the minutes he was in there, I mean, he was producing. He was doing solid. Um, he started. So if he's going to start, stay out of foul trouble, and say he plays 25 minutes, he's going to get you an easy, I want to say probably 24. At a 3.6 price tag, all that you need is pretty much 16, 17 for value. Um, so I think he's a cheap guy that you could look at at center as well if Adams is out. So, hey, that's where I'm at. Um, so remember, my top uh, plays for the day, if Powell's out for the Raptors, you got to go cheap with one of the small forwards. I think Sarik is a lock, um, and I really think that Kim Walker is going to have a really good game. I'm going against the Cavs. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, make sure to click the subscribe button below if you haven't already. Click the like button. It really helps me out. Thank you guys for watching my video, um, and let's win some money tomorrow. Talk to you later.